The, uh, the economy shows that, uh, from all the records and everything else, that the consumers are now spent, uh, saving over 5 percent of their income in savings and not using it in purchases. We're looking at the government and saying, please help us, help us stimulate this economy. How do you stimulate the consumers with good news of what's going on and with the positiveness to spend their money to stimulate the economy also? Because we're losing, we're losing the, the biggest piece of the pie. You talk about the government trying to stimulate it when it is the individual consumers that can do it even more so. So what's the, what kind of a PR program does the government have to, to stimulate the consumers to show that um, they're the ones that are really going to help make this economy change? Well, the first, the first thing, really, and the biggest problem is that the consumers have lost confidence in our country. That's why they're not spending. They've lost confidence in the banks. They've lost confidence in the government. When you have people who don't believe that they can go out and buy a car because either they're not going to get a good loan or they can't afford to pay it back because they might lose their job, people don't buy it. So until we can start to give them confidence again in the fact that we're on the right track with this, with this package and with the packages to come, I don't think you're going to see a lot of that. But what we do believe is going to help is that as we loosen credit in this country, that you are going to see people starting to buy more. As, people, as, as the job loss starts to level out, you are going to see more consumer spending. But right now, every person that's afraid of losing their job is not going to make a big purchase. That's just the reality of it. Uh, if your car's not falling apart, you're not going to go buy one, even if they offer you a $10,000 credit, because you're still going to have a $20,000 loan. So most people aren't going to do that until they feel comfortable that we have gotten through the worst of it. We think we're getting there, and we think we're getting there much sooner than later. Um, we believe that probably by the fall of this year, that people are going to start to see some change and some, some uh, change in attitude and that people's confidence will come back. Uh, but quite frankly, over the years, we've outpriced the market in a lot of things. I mean, I mean just take houses. Houses now probably are really worth what they should have been worth five years ago. It's the truth of the matter. I mean, so now even though people are losing money, this is what they should have been selling for all along. But we just kept feeling like nothing was ever going to change. We were going to continue to, to just raise prices on everything. I mean, something that should cost $2 at CVS costs 5 Why? Just because they could get it. So now we're riding the ship. Um, and I think that as we ride the ship, that people's confidence will come back because they'll see that we're making a real effort to do the right thing. And once they realize that, I do believe you'll see people start to buy more. I think you'll see people start to purchase homes, to purchase cars, to do other things they need to do. It's going to happen. Uh, but I think it's probably not going to happen maybe as quickly as we'd like. But I say to people all the time, if it happens in the next six months, understand it took us six years to get here. We're not going to change it overnight but we're going to change enough of it incrementally over time to make it right. Congresswoman, <clears throat> you mentioned green and you mentioned energy and two things that are near and dear to my heart. Uh, we, have a, uh, uh, we have a waste crisis in this country and we have an energy crisis yes, in this country, do. but yet waste to energy has been eliminated, specifically eliminated, as uh, part of the green fuel portfolio for uh, uh, energy companies to purchase. Um, Certainly waste is renewable, and all you have to do is, uh, if you don't believe that, wait till the rubbish man doesn't come by for a few weeks and you'll see just how renewable it is. Uh, and even a portion of the waste stream can be separated, uh, paper and film plastic, that can burn in any coal-fired boiler. It can burn cleaner than coal. It can burn cheaper than coal. We have lots of coal-fired boilers in Northeast Ohio, and we can get lower cost power. But the key is to make it qualify as part of the green fuel portfolio. And we can't seem to get anyone to pick up on that in, in Washington. Well, actually, it can really qualify under another area. It doesn't have to be under that because you're right. It, they, but, but you see, one of the things that we're looking at as a country is how we deal with waste in general. Let's just take something as simple as something we use every day, batteries, especially the lithium ones. We don't know how to, do any, we don't know how to get rid of them. Or the little chips that are in our phones or in our computers. What do we do with them? 
because they also carry a little bit of radioactive material in them. How do we, how do we get rid of those things safely? So waste management is a huge part of what we're doing right now, and I will send you some information from Science and Technology if you will just touch base with the staff afterwards, and I can give you uh, some of the things I think that you might be able to do in terms of trying to get uh, funding for research for those areas, because it is something that we need to really do as a country, because now we have so much waste, we really don't know what to do with it. Especially they call it e-waste, is that right, Brad? E-waste. We don't know what to do with it. Well, I didn't even know what it was until they told me what it, what it was <laughs> on the committee. But e-waste is, is a very uh, a big problem in this country. Question. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. We are in the auto, the group we're here, we've been in the automotive business for almost 50 years. And we see what's going on now with the manufacturers where billions of dollars are going to GM and Chrysler to try to keep them going. But on a, the front line where people are trying to sell the cars, Dealers and lease companies like what we're on, we've called numerous, numerous banks. You can't get them to take a phone call. And well, it's frustrating. And we see it, there's a disconnect between what's going on in Washington and what we're trying to do on the front line. Let we've me called probably six or seven banks, I would say in the last six months. If you're in the automotive related business, they won't take a call. Well, but how do we survive? How do you get the cars? to the consumers? Let me say two things to you. Uh, and part of it goes back to the first answer is that um, confidence is down. But, but I had a meeting with the White House and the governor on last week about the automotive industry in particular. Uh, we talked about what we need to do to help jumpstart uh, the whole automotive industry again. Now, what we have gotten the government to agree, the federal government to agree to do, is there, the federal government is in the process of changing out its automobiles, of course. Uh, 17,000 automobiles are going to be purchased in the next 30 days. We have gotten the, the White House to agree to, portion, to purchase a large portion of them out of the state of Ohio to try to at least help our automotive people to get back on their feet. The other thing we have done is, is made clear to them how much we really need to do to try to support the automotive industry. And what they have as well done is gotten a list of banks that are going to be re ready to do the financing on some of these um, auto issues. And I will get those banks' names to you. I don't have them off the top of my head, but we just did this last week. So it's been, it's been really moving very, very quickly. We met on last Thursday. Uh, because what, what people don't understand is that most manufacturing of automobiles and even the whole concept of, of the automotive industry really is right here in the Midwest. It's between us and Michigan for the most part. So we have come together to say that uh, there are some things that we can do that we think can make things better. So we did have that meeting and I have the White House course, I mean the White House, and they call, them, they call everybody czars or something, but he's a czar on the automotive industry and I will give you his name as well. Right. See, but that's the way we feel. That's why we sat down with them. What they did was they called together mayors of communities that have automobile uh, manufacturing facilities in them. But I'm thinking, you need to talk to some people who are out here selling cars because the biggest issue we're having right now, in addition, obviously, to, to keeping the, the big three up and running, is auto dealers. That's number two on the agenda as it relates to the automotive industry. So I'll make sure that we give you... Um, I think his name is Dr. Whitaker, but I'll make sure I get you his name. 